Nice. T. Gown lock black. Large men's. Did they just assume my gen- G'day everybody and welcome back uh, to episode 2 on the 900SS. Yes, Gowan Lock Ducati. If you're familiar with this channel, you would have heard me mention them a heap of times. Put a new one in, so I've got a, a new one from Gowan Lock Ducati. New inlet Viton seals. This, these are from Gowan Lock Ducati in Australia. If you're uh, looking for parts, there, you men. Now that's, uh, you need a special tool to do that and uh, I purchased one from Gowan Lock Ducati again. I've got all of my parts through Gowan Lock Cycle Works. I actually got them from Gowan Lock Ducati. So they've always been my go-to people in Australia for Ducati information and, and spare parts. Pretty well everything I've bought for this bike uh, has come through Gowan Lock. I'd made some phone calls, some preliminary phone calls some months ago to Gowan Lock and to uh, Euro Twins in Brisbane about the work that needs to be done on the cylinder heads, just trying to get a gauge and getting a handle on what it was going to cost me and trying to help me make a decision as to where I was going to send it. So last week I received a message on Facebook from Joshua and Joshua said, Hi Andy, just saw your video. I work at Gowan Lock Ducati, in fact my family own it, so it's a family owned business. You've got mum and dad and the two boys and other employees as well, obviously. And all they do is Ducati, and, and they're particularly good if you've got an older Ducati. So he reached out, he said, give us a shout, and um, I'll do my best to try and keep your costs down. And I was gobsmacked. I thought, oh, wow, that's fantastic. That made the decision easy, so it's going to go to go and lock. I just want to address a couple of concerns. There's people that have said, oh, great, now it's a sellout. We've got an Aussie business, family owned, reached out to another Aussie and said, hey, Let's, uh, let's see if we can help. I think that it's important that we support businesses that support us. This is just a little bit of a collaboration where um, they think that they can help us keep the cost down on the Ducati um, and, and perhaps showcase their capabilities. At the end of the day, it's a win-win for everybody. I've always shouted out Gowan Lock anyway, for free. So I'm still paying for these cylinder heads to be overhauled. And uh, Gowan Lock have promised that uh, they'll try and keep the cost as low as possible. And that's, um, that's just a really nice thing to do. So I can't thank you guys enough, but I've got a lot of work to do. So let's get on with it. All right, so in episode one, I um, pretty well determined that we've got worn out valve guides. I'm confident that we've got no issues with pistons, rings and barrels. The compression test showed almost eight bar of compression and it got there really quickly. And the engine was cold. So if I warm the engine up, close it to operating temperature, which is what you're supposed to do when you do a compression test, uh, close all the ring gaps up and get all the, all the clearances right, then I'm confident that this compression is going to be fine. So all I've got to do is pull the heads off. But because Ducati, um, that means that we're going to have to pull the motor out of the frame because the cylinder head, uh, the vertical cylinder, bangs into a cross member across the frame. Uh, that facilitates the top shock absorber mount. And of course, Ducati build their, um, their engines are a stress member. We've got a B-style trellis frame here, and the engine carries the swing arm, kickstand, and everything else. So that whole back wheel and swing arm have got to come off the bike. I should be riding this thing. It's such a beautiful day out there today, and um, the riders of Tasmania are off having a, having a nice ride and lunch, and, and here's me. All right. In order to facilitate the removal of the back wheel, uh, I'm going to have to pull a few things off. Start, and I'm going to start with the exhaust. I've pulled the fairing off the other side now, and I've drained the oil, so I'm going to pop the exhaust out now.
It's always a good idea to bag and tag. All right. Uh, the next job, I just want to crack the bolt up under here. Loosen off that clamp on the downpipe for the rear cylinder. So that he's free. Okay, two bolts on the... Two nuts, sorry, on the... Um, the studs on the cylinder head. Let's try a spanner. Let's try a smaller socket. That'll work. Yeah, damage you, Caddy. some uh, half rings in there I imagine, yes, maybe these guys. Okay, I'm hoping that's just a matter now of trying to manipulate this thing out of here. Are oh, the brackets is there? No. if I release these. Okay, I've only released the one bolt and it's already showing signs of being a bit more cooperative. There we go. Alright, exhaust system's out front and rear. Alright, I need to get the swing arm out because the swing arm has got to come out to drop the motor down. I think I can take it out in one piece, uh, so as an assembly. I will need to remove the rear shock next and then um, take the, the pivot pin, pull the swing arm out, obviously take the front sprocket off, get the chain off the sprocket and I think I should be able to wheel the whole thing out from under it. Um, well that's, that's, that's the plan. In order to get to the top of the shock absorber for the mount and also to get the battery box and uh, air cleaner assembly and everything else out through the top. Uh, I'm just going to strip the rest of this bodywork off, so tank and seat, etc. So they don't get damaged and knocked around. And then we shall proceed. Alright, a couple of things to get to under here. Plug. And these three hoses, got to turn off the fuel tap. This is the drain from around the, um, from around the fuel filler cap, so that can stay on board. This is the return line back to the tank. Hopefully it's high enough above the fuel. Oh. 
Oh, it's stubborn. And this is the fuel supply. Not much petrol in this tank, so thankfully. Come on, you jeezless thing. There we go. Okay, we've got this guy here, which has got a circlip, sorry, a split pin in there, uh, that I could probably just extract that pin. But it's probably just as easy to undo those. Not sure whether that's the right method or not, but I'm going to make mistakes. Pretty sure it'll be fine. Oh. Should just now be a matter of lifting the tank off. Ah, there's one at the front. Alright, uh, I'm going to take these off too for reasons which will become obvious later. Sometimes the safest place to keep the bolts is where they came from. Right, so now most of the things are out of the way that need to be out of the way uh, to access this rear swing arm. The first thing I want to do is get the shock absorber out and it's a fairly simple exercise. We've only got a top mount and a bottom mount. Problem is that that's the hypotenuse of a triangle. So if we go and pull that out, this frame's just going to collapse and the swing arm's going to come up into it. Uh, the rear tyre's going to come up into it. So what I've done in the past when I've had to remove the shock absorber on this to access the shims, to measure the shims, uh, is put a jack underneath the motor. And that way you can jack, jack the motor up and manipulate the load that's on this shock absorber at the top. And I just want to crack these loose. Oh, that's going to hurt. <laughs> that hurt my hand. Stupid injury. Get the I'm not mucking around bar out. Right. All right, they're loose now. Now, I don't have a fancy um, motorcycle lift. This is made out of a, an old hospital bed, and I don't have one of those fancy motorcycle lift jacks. I've just got a scissor lift, car jack. I'm just taking a load of that. Oh, I've got a 17mm spanner on the nut. Just going to. Wind that off. And extract. Without losing the washer on the back. So that's, that's free in there now. Jack that up a little higher. Is 
those little little O-rings on the side on that bush. Shock is out, bolts are back where they belong. So now the swing arm's free to move around and the weight of the bike is resting on this jack. So we obviously can't leave it on the jack because we've got to pull the motor out. So um, I've got a cunning plan. All right, my cunning plan involves removing the rear foot pegs for reasons which will become apparent. Well, we're currently on the um, paddock stand and on the jack. So I've got a little bit of timber here. I'm just going to pop under the wheel so that we don't disturb the height of the wheel. And I'm going to remove the paddock stand. While I was at work the other day, I knocked up um, a couple of these brackets out of some scrap. A uh, bit of a pain in the neck because, as you can see, I don't have a MIG welder. Uh, so I've got to, got to TIG weld everything because I work with Tim Wall stainless steel most of the time. And the plan is to bolt them onto here. And I hope they fit because I just took a couple of quick measurements and uh, made, them, made them at work. So it uh, looks like it's going to work all right. Obviously, I've got one for the for the other side. If these flex too much, which they shouldn't do, they're fairly heavy heavy wall material, about three millimeters thick. Um, this is only two mil. But if they flex too much, I'll put a gusset in there. But I think they'll be okay. You can hear a heap of sirens going off, but it's nothing nothing sinister. got Sandra on the back of a fire engine. All right, good stuff, it fits. So now if I lower this jack, we are now supporting the weight of the bike, uh, the motor and the frame on these stands. And then I can remove the swing arm and lower the engine down and out of the frame and the frame should sit here. I've, I've spaced, I've made a 100 mil standoff just to get them clear of the casings. Well, it's working so far. Okay, before some keyboard warrior jumps on and starts giving me hell, I better disconnect this battery. See how hot these get? They're not big enough, these leads. I might upgrade that. These earth, earth leads. Just a heads up, if you're ever designing an electrical circuit, you need to make sure that your earth leads, or ground wires, um, can carry the right amount of current. Just saying, going to take this off, because um, I think it's going to get in the way, and it's got to come off anyway. So I can line it back up again. So I'm happy where that is. Next one neighbours out there playing with his caravan, all the noise. Don't they know who I think I am? Loctite is your friend on these old Ducatis. I Loctite these in too.
There we go. Okay, now over this side we've got the brake, obviously. I'm just going to undo the bolt for the reservoir, the brake light switch, remove the two bolts on the frame and cable tie it off to the um, swing arm. I need to remove a couple of cable ties. Right, brake light switch disconnected. Reservoir out. That had a nut on the back. Has this one got a nut on the back too? Should have. Not captive. Yeah, that one's captive. As were the others. And this one is too, but there was a, still a nut on the back. Not sure what that's about. Put the longer one back where it belongs. Right, hopefully, I think, I think that'll be okay. I'll just uh, cable tie this guy off. Oh, I've got him, uh, him secured there. So the only thing that should be left holding the swing arm on, I think, is there's two pinch bolts, one either side, and um, a rod that runs through the through the back of the crankcase. So we'll knock that out of there now. I've just nipped up the the axle because I want to check while I've got this in here if there's any movement in that swing arm and it feels pretty bloody good. Doesn't want to twist. Oh, happy with that. Okay, let's pop these off. These rubber bungs. Might be easier said than done. Give me that, you Jesus thing. Oh, Ruth. I'm going to fully remove it. I'll screw it back in there later. And once again, for the second time. Came out a bit easier. Uh, I'm going to have to take the jolly chain wear strip off to get to the pinch bolt because Ducati. Swing him out of the way. Might engage the help of a torque multiplier. Uh, might fit in a different torque multiplier. And here's the wife. All right, so the only thing holding it in there, I've just. Uh, <laughs> I just had uh, some quite a big chunk of the day taken up with uh, husband duties, so we've and not what you're thinking. Uh, we had to remove an old couch, massive thing, take it to the tip, go and get another one, come back and put it upstairs. So I've uh, lost a bit of continuity here, but from memory, the last time we were standing here, I was looking at this wire clip. See if I can't get it out with a standard set of circlip pliers. Ah, yeah, not too bad. Let's try and pop a screwdriver behind it.
and should be able to just drift that out of there with a bit of luck. Mm -hmm. I don't really have much suitable here to drift it with other than this. See how easy it wants to move. Ah, yes. I'm presuming this has been out before because it's got an R written on here. I'll try and support this wheel and just extract. Voila. Now the shims on the ends here. And, uh, plenty of grease in there. I'm reasonably happy about that. In order to keep it all safe and all together, I'm just going to slide that pin back through. No bugger, I won't. It's going to hang out too far. I might knock it. Just put the shims back on. Put the circ clip back on. It's marked right, so I'll keep it like that. See if this would come out of here without too much drama. Happy days. Actually, what I'll do is put the pinch bolts back into the swing arm. I need to get one of these. I'm missing one from the from the hugger. Well, isn't that a sight? There we go. We've got the swing arm out sitting on the floor.